can't think of a better person to address the topic of osteoporosis and chiropractic treatments. Dr. McCormick is a chiropractic physician, an Olympic athlete, and a survivor of 12 osteoporosis-related fractures. He continues to push himself in pursuit of what he loves to do. His new book, Great Bones, provides a comprehensive and deep dive into understanding the pathophysiology behind bone loss, the role of nutrition, and much more in regards to bone health. So Dr. McCormick, I get the following question all the time. I have osteoporosis. Can a person with osteoporosis actually see a chiropractor? And is chiropractic safe for individuals with osteoporosis? Yes, it is. And the reason why is because the way a person fractures with who has osteoporosis is axial compression or bending forward and the vertebra hitting each other that way. If you have a uh, if, like in a chiropractic, if a person's lying on their stomach and then the doctor pushes them what's called P to A from posterior to yeah. anterior, then you're not actually, compre- you're not compressing that way. You're pushing this way. And if you notice, if you have, if like, let's say you have this, the vertebrae, each my hands of vertebrae going across, uh, the spine going across here. And if you push from here to, to here, so if this is flexion, this is extension. If you press down, this happens. It's extension. Yeah. Okay. Happens. It's not flexion. It's extension. And so. Okay. So that's so in our language as physical therapists, that's more of a mobilization, yes. as opposed to a a high thrust manipulation. You're right. And when I is sometimes. A rotation. Oh, okay. Well, that's in, in the cervical spine. Yes, that's the and and sometimes in the thoracic or lumbar. In the lumbar, yes, not as much in the thoracic. Okay. but, but uh, in the lumbar too. But like if I yeah, put, the thoracic's uh, often the kind of. Yeah. Well, let's go through the different parts of the spine. Okay. Okay, okay fair. Great idea. So on the lumbar spine, if I, a lot of times I just traction a person out. So I'll, I, I have uh, this, what's called Cox COX table, Cox table that just tractions the person. I put my hand on their back and, and the table comes out and I gently traction out their lower back. So the, is their pelvis strapped? No, no. Oh, no, no it's just literally just, no, just distracting laying. through the table. Okay. And then my hand traps is. the vertebra. And so mm-hmm. that's why it's real gentle and, and it's, it's not traumatic at all. You know, there's no thrust happening at all, but I can really mobilize the lumbar spine that way. And I'll get lots right. of pieces. The, the bones will, will actually move a little bit, but it's all from a axial distraction. Yep. Um, or I can put them on their side and move them. But once again, <laughs> when I put the person on their side, they're on their side here. Here's the vertebra, this is the vertebra. I'll take my the butt of my hand here get it on one vertebra and actually pull it off of this one and then rotate. Okay. So there's never a slamming in of one vertebra. And I'm pretty gentle, but but I mobilize the spine. Then if you go to the thoracics and you do it on the, on the person's stomach, uh, for their, they're lying prone, yep. same thing. Like I said before, it's the vertebra are going this way as you're pushed down. The thing that you do really have to be cautious is of the ribs. You wouldn't want your hands to be out on a person's ribs. It's easy to break somebody's ribs if they have osteoporosis. But breaking the thoracic spine, I think that would be, unless you're a gorilla and really pushing really, really hard on the person. Um, But, you know, you just be gentle, you know. And even if you didn't do thrust maneuvers to them or just gentle, gentle, gentle thrust maneuvers, you can get in there in the nooks, nooks and crannies and do soft tissue and get mm. trigger points in between the, the ribs and the and this the uh, the vertebral bodies themselves. Just getting rid of the trigger points that way and just gently yeah. uh, mobilizing it can be a big help, you know. Yes. So I mean, I do do a lot of soft tissue, and uh, so I do a lot of soft tissue. You know, which which for the listener is like you know working on the fascia, working on the little muscles, and you know the. Connecting you know, ligaments. I'm one. I 
I don't think, I mean, there's a lot of chiropractors who just adjust, and then there's massage therapists and stuff who just do hit soft tissue, but I do both. And the reason why is because I feel like if you have trigger points in there, I want to get rid of them. And then the joints move so much, right, like butter half the time. But number two, you just get better long-term results if you work on the muscles and then give that person exercises to keep them loose you know, and strong. So I'm glad you said that because so often I'll have clients come to me and they say, I went and saw a chiropractor, but it didn't do anything. And I'm like, did they release the muscles before they tried to release the joints? And they're like, no, they just, you know, they're in and out because it's fast. You know, they can move on to anyways. But a lot of physical therapists will do the same. I mean, you know, there's good and bad in, you know, all no, the I, mean, I, I think you got to do three things with everybody. I mean, well, nutrition too, but I think you have to do work on the soft tissue. You have to mobilize the joints and then you have to give them exercises to strengthen, loosen, you know, engage uh, a lot Teach of the muscles to work again. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I have so many patients who come in and they have chronic sick relic joint, chronic lower back pain, and you look at their buttocks and the, and the, they have none. There's nothing there on the one side of where their pain is. And I say, get out of here, go away. I mean, give you two exercises for your buttock muscle. And yeah. that's, and I don't want to see it for two weeks. Just do these exercises. And they come back and say, wow, my sacred relic is way better. And, I have a little support now. <laughs> so which which was the segue into, so I'm going to just finish the treatment first. And then, because we started segue weighing into the role of chiropractic care in the treatment of osteoporosis. But the very first one, just to finish, because I have had clients tell me, I know that's when the fracture happened. You know, it was like a hard, you know, it was a quick thrust. It was a they twisted my, you know, my leg over into rotation. I was in so much pain. I couldn't get off the table. Um, you know, I had my sister in Northern British Columbia tell me the same thing about a physical therapist working on her. So, I mean, you know. No, it just happened. No doubt about it. And so, have- so with that, the, what should, what should clients, as a, from a chiropractic point of view, um, what should they be asking you know before they go in for treatment what they should should be looking for in seeking safe care i think that's such a hard question and uh and a good question um yeah i I don't i honestly don't know because as you said all there's all these chiropractors and they all do different techniques they all do different uh, you know amounts of thrust in there. Some of them don't do any thrust. I, I'm a nuts and bolts person. So to me, if a joint's stuck, I got to move it. You know, if a muscle's weak, I got to strengthen it. If a muscle is tight, I want to loosen it up. So I'm just a very nuts and bolt person. And um, I don't think you can do all that with just a laying on, on your hand, uh, the hands on somebody's back and with energy work or with, with reflex work or things like that. I think, you know, to me, that doesn't work as well as actually mobilizing a joint. But if a person's really, really fragile, then you can't mobilize. Or a lot of times, a patient will be really osteoporotic and really stiff because everything is, they've never been to a chiropractor or they've not done exercises all their life. And so they're incredibly stiff. Well, you can't be a hero and get those joints moving. It's not going to happen, you know? So you do as gentle mobilization as you can. You get ex- get them doing exercises, and that's what we, you you can't be a hero and get joints moving that are um, arthritic and and fused together essentially. And that and that happens. Yeah. And mobilizing is usually a very gentle motion. Would they, at the very least, expect their practitioner? I mean, I know as physical therapists, we have to get permission to manipulate. And we we're asked to, prior to doing any maneuver or move, to say, this is what I'm going to be doing, explaining the procedure, and getting permission. I'm assuming this is the same thing in chiropractic care. Good question, too. I, I'm not sure I give com, per, get permission from the patient. But I also say, OK, ma'am, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be mobilizing. I'm going to be moving this joint here. And you might hear a little crack in there a little release of nitrogen gas is being released. I'm mobilizing that joint. I'm getting some motion in that joint. I don't then say, is that okay if I do that? But 
you know, they just say, okay, that sounds great. You know, (laughs) (laughs) Um, I get, you know, uh, I have many patients though, who I say, and I always ask, I say, so you've ever been to a chiropractor before? And then they say no. And then I, then I explain what I'm going to do. Um, but I don't specifically say, you know, do I have your permission to do that? You know, they're, they're usually hurting and saying, you do anything you want, but <laughs> I am desperate. So, but I explain to people, I say, listen. Why you're doing it. And yeah. yeah. I say, listen, I'm going to work on that pectoralis minor because, and then I take them to another room. And I show them on a chart that yeah. pectoralis minor attaches to, you know, the third, fourth, and fifth ribs and your, your nerves go right underneath this. I, I explain all the anatomy to them. I say, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how to do it. So you can do this at home. And I, and I show them how to roll their buttock muscles with piriformis. Yes. You know, I'm teaching people the whole time that I'm doing, I'm not, I'm not just putting them down and doing it, you know? So, so there's a quality right, out of a good chiropractor. I mean, it, similarly, I do one-on-one for an hour because I feel I need the time to teach somebody before, you know, before they can learn to help themselves. I'm, and a I'm, a, I'm not there. You know, I want a person to be able to help themselves. So I'm always, okay. always teaching. So may I ask how much time you get with or that I, you allow? For a new patient, about 45 minutes, but then for each session, 45, 15 minutes for each session. Okay, you're moving fast with me. Oh, I mean, compared to me, I am i don't move fast enough. <laughs> uh, 15 minutes with patient. Okay, good for you. But a lot of chiropractors, I mean, physical therapists, 50, 10 minutes is like really fast. 15 is fast too. A lot of them allow 30 to 45. But I understand many chiropractic clinics they're in and people are in and out in five minutes. I worked for a so, man who did 10 to 15, 10 to 16 an hour. That's wow. It. So that is definitely, if you know, from what we're t- discussing in terms of releasing the muscle, educating, yeah. release, you know, you can't do it. So if your clinician is not spending at least 10 to 15 minutes with you or longer, is probably not the right clinician for you, especially if you have osteoporosis. Okay. And your comment earlier in regards to the ribs, I thought that was interesting because actually just in uh, the journal Nature 2023, it was a retrospective analysis of the incidence of severe adverse events among recipients of chiropractic spinal manipulative therapy. They had almost a million treatments that they looked at out of 30 clinics over five years in Hong Kong. And amongst that, there was only six adverse events, and it was rib fractures in osteoporotic women. So it's interesting, huh? Just because you had said that at the beginning, I thought, oh, well. I never quite... read the study, but that makes sense. Yeah, so you're quite right on there, you know. So leave I... the ribs alone and be gentle to the spine. Okay. Well, I hope this allows people to have a little more confidence when they're seeking care as to what they should be looking for in their in a clinician. Ask, um, be and comfortable. Make sure they know that you have osteoporosis. Yes, and be comfortable saying no if they're not comfortable. And ask maybe that can you please describe what you're going to do before. You know, not to assume that we're all going to do it because we all have busy days and sometimes we forget to ask permission for each thing or to describe it in detail. But if you, as a as a patient, you should ask those things. And I, and you can also, if you're really, really afraid, if I, number one, if I have a patient, like if I'm adjusting their neck and they're really afraid of that, I'll, if they don't want me to adjust their neck, that's fine. I do what's called respiratory movements. And so I, as they breathe in, I move the joint, and then they breathe nice. out, and breathe, breathe in, and move that. And I don't do a cavitation. I don't do a, a thrust with it. And you work on the muscles. You do traction to the neck. So there's lots of ways to approach, you know, skeletal health. And and the, the most important thing is the patient's comfortable, and and then you know you win their trust out, you know, over time, and then they realize then they can just relax and let you do your job. And maybe I'll never truly thrust and adjust somebody, but that's because they aren't comfortable with it, which is fine. Great. And can you remind me where your clinic is located if people are looking for 
chiropractic care? Are you I, still seeing people in person? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. um, I am. Um, you don't have to give your address, just what state, at least, though. So. Belchertown, Massachusetts. Belchertown, Massachusetts. Belchertown, okay. All right. Um, if you're on holiday and you want extra special work, <laughs> you can look Keith up. So, Keith, thank you so much for this opportunity to discuss this really important topic. Thank you so much.